Hey guys, don't mind the glare. This is Just Fixing Garage. I'm Justin, and today we are looking at a 2014 Dodge Dart. Uh, this is actually kind of a two-part episode. Uh, this is the second time it's come back in here in a week. Uh, originally, I came in and we looked at it. It seemed like the alternator was bad, so we replaced that. But it seems like it has a couple of other, other electronic gremlins because it came back to us and it essentially died while running again. Uh, would not start or turn over afterwards. I went and checked it out, pushed the car to get it out of the way, and then immediately it would start again. So something very strange going on there. And if you've been following my channel, I, you know I had a no crank, no start in a 2013 Dart where it ended up being a ground issue. So now I'm circling back thinking, oh, maybe this is a ground issue. So follow along if you wanna see us through the alternator. And I'm also gonna show you um, the ground upgrade that I'm doing on this car, which I may do the other Dart as well, just to rule out it being a uh, ground issue. And hopefully that'll like, you know, help us in the long run. Again, this intermittent issue is hard to diagnose. I was hoping I could make it happen and then I could, um, I could just do, put a ground wire temporarily to test it and I just, it hasn't failed on me again, unfortunately. So I'm gonna go and show you uh, at the end of this video, the ground upgrade that I'm adding. It costs like 10 to 12 bucks from AutoZone. It took me about five minutes. And then also I'm gonna go and do the ground cleaning connections of the existing grounds, which uh, I did in another video, the no crank, no start, which is probably like the most watched video I have because you know, these things have a little electronic issues. So if you're having any electronic issues, uh, be sure to, you know, look at the end of this video for the ground upgrade I'm going to do. That might rule out a lot of problems and it's cheap and you can do it yourself in, in 10, I, I'm going to say 15 minutes if you have to grab your socket set. You only need a 10 millimeter and a 13 millimeter to do it. But anyway, guys, follow along, alternator, and then diagnosing electric bugs in this thing and hopefully it's good to go. If not, I'll be making a second video later on about how screwed up of a diagnosis I did. But otherwise, let's uh, hope for the best. Let's get started. So I legitimately was filming a different video, getting ready to work on uh, an old Pontiac. <laughs> and my wife came out to the shop, said that my sister-in-law tried to call. Um, she's with a fiance and uh, a car they have, a 2014 Dart just died on them. Uh, it's from what I'm hearing, I know there was a new battery in it two years ago, so I doubt it's a battery. And the battery, if the battery's bad, it doesn't matter. If the car's running, it's not gonna stop from a dead battery unless it's like completely bricked or something. So anyway, I'm uh, on my way now to go see what's up. I might as well make a video on it. Chances are I'm gonna be changing the alternator on this thing. I don't do mobile calls. This is not a thing for me anymore. I, 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 I'm not saying I'm above that. It's just, you, know, you build a nice shop and you have a lift and you uh, have all your tools in a nice certain spot. You don't feel like driving them around. All right, now I'm just bringing jumper cable. See if I can put enough of a charge on this car to get it going, assuming it's an electrical issue, which it's not clicking now. So similar to like a Dodge Journey and other cars, or any car really, once the alternator goes, your car may keep going for an hour, 20 minutes, 20 minutes to an hour, something like that. Um, and you're running off the battery, so you're gonna get some weird electrical issues. Uh, when it happened to me in a Mustang, I started to um, have windshield wipers go off, my horn started going off by itself. It was acting real crazy. And I knew it was the alternator uh, on that car, uh, because if you went up the battery, the car died. No, that was like a quick, dirty way of testing it. Not recommended with a lot of electronics, but whatever. I mean, that's how people used to do it. But anyway, I'm gonna get there, check it out. Uh, I may film when I talk to them. Uh, this is also Caleb from Always Something Garage and his fiance's car. He could definitely handle the work, but he's the one stuck in the car with no transportation. So uh, let's see what happens. And uh, hopefully I can help them out, get the car back on the road. It's actually one of, it's my wife's old car that we gave to them. Uh, and gave, but they just took it over. Uh, when we uh, when we got her a rogue for the kids. So anyway, I'm almost there. I'll keep you posted. See you. Caleb, what happened? There's always something happening. <laughs> I don't know. Dodge things. I don't Look at know. this. It's like a rescue vehicle. This is like its it big is. daddy it, coming it, in to it, save it. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so we're driving, going to breakfast. Um, I don't have my stabilizer, so check, it's gonna be safe. Check shaky. engine light came on. Battery light came on. I pulled in because I didn't. I didn't know what it was. But right when I knew, when we pulled in, it shut off and it was alternator, so. Yeah, because we did the battery. This is like our old car. We did the battery. There might even be a sticker that says when. It must have been like 2019. And it was at least a three-year battery. It had to be. Because I was like, yeah, give me the good one, probably. You know, I'm not always cheap. <laughs> but at least the alternator is easy to get to. And I'll be able to film that. And it'll push back my other cars that I'm working on. But, uh, yeah, that'll be fine. We're going to try to give it a little juice. Get it like an eighth of a mile up the road so we can probably trailer it. 
I mean, we could probably, I don't know, the trailer park there is pretty anal, right? They don't really work on anything anymore. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, we're, we're jumping it. We're going to get it out of here because we're in a stranger's driveway. Um, then we'll be good to go. So, all right. Check back in. Nah, he did. So, uh, Caleb, you're used to me, you know, talking in videos. Yeah. So we got the dart here. Caleb got it. We got it on the back of a trailer on around a blind corner, hoping to not get hit. Uh, we had an alternator ordered through AutoZone, uh, but it sounds like, unfortunately, um, the hub didn't put it on the car, so we at the truck, so we didn't get it today. So we're gonna have to wait till tomorrow to get it. Pretty expensive part, so uh, we will wait. Uh, so we were looking at the alternator and we're going to get cracking on it the first thing that caleb is doing is taking out our makeshift battery that we were trying to use to get this thing running to move it uh it's all 10 millimeter bolts or studs that take it out yeah it's the thing on the left yeah yeah that other one does nothing i don't think so he's, yeah he's taking that all and loosening it out so we can pull the battery out even the battery hold down is 10 millimeter if you have to pull your battery which in our case we are now because we put a different battery in it uh, Otherwise, we are going to get into taking off the alternator. There's only three bolts. Uh, we've got one top bolt, and then there's two on the bottom that you can't see, but they are there. I already took off this plastic cap here. So you'll have a plastic cap. You just need to pinch it to slide that off. We know we'll have to loosen that. There's likely a, another clip in there somewhere that is just hidden behind it. I actually can see it a bit. Probably once we break the stud loose and move that out, we'll have wire harness. Uh, but we also have to figure out the tensioner. So we're going to look at the tensioner because we need to get the belt off before the alternator can even come out. So I'll set this up, we'll film, and maybe I'll talk you through it step by step. All right, guys. So uh, we're swapping out Caleb for Kevin. Uh, we didn't get the part when we, were, when we wanted. So we are going to uh, retake off the battery. I mentioned, and I'll probably chop this all together, take, take a 10, 10 millimeter uh, ratchet with an extension and everything to get the battery off. We just moved it over to our lift. There's also a clamp that holds down. You don't want to take the battery out or just unhook it. We're taking ours out because we have to charge it. But that's step one, guys. Step one, take your battery, ground connection off at a minimum. We're taking our battery out to charge it, get it out of the way. And then we're going to put our car up in the air because step two is going to be getting the tensioner off of the alternator. So we're going to show you how to do that. But first, we're going to get the car up in the air to make it easier. And then we'll get right to it. So. We'll follow up shortly. It seems like it's going to be all right then. Hey guys, step one was to take the battery and disconnect it. Step two is going to be just taking your passenger side wheel off. You can get around doing this if you don't want to, but if you want the smoothest, easiest way to do it, take the wheel off, get your car up in the air a little bit to do that. Next, we're going to remove some of our plastic clips for the splash guard. So if you look here, we've got uh, a bolt here. It's probably an eight, some plastic clips following us around. We're going to take that off to get that out of the way some to hopefully give us a little more visibility in there to make getting to the tensioner easier. Again, you could just kind of force your way in there and, and try to get it, but we're going to do it the easier way for us. Spend an extra five minutes taking it off and fighting with it. So we'll come right back. guys so we took out a total of uh what is it five eight millimeter bolts they're mostly lined up here you can see where they were going in you got one two then i think it's three in this corner one two and three so you got one two three four five all on the bottom the rest is plastic push pins i use uh this tool to separate them you can probably buy this at harbor freight um and work off of that anyway uh, now we're starting to get to where we can see our tensioner that is not a tensioner, that's our pulley. The tensioner is right above it. Um, somewhat hard to see, but if I can get that sticker out of the way, we're gonna be able to put a bolt on that and easily get in there and get that out. You can probably do this without taking this piece off, but I wanted you guys to visually see where the tensioner is at. It's right here. 
I believe, yeah, it's right there. So we're gonna put a, a wrench or a socket on that and loosen it. I'll tell you what size in just a minute, but we're gonna do that to get the belt loose. Much easier to see. All right, so I found out the size of the tensioner. It is a 16 millimeter. I don't have a great wrench, but I got a wrench uh, that I can get in there. The tension doesn't seem super tight on this, so I'm going to put it onto the tensioner bolt that I showed you, and I'm gonna turn it left as if I'm loosening, and that's gonna loosen the belt enough to pop it off. Kevin's with me. He's going to pop the belt off as I do this. And you can't see the tension now, unfortunately, on the camera, but just know it's there. I'm putting the wrench on there, and I am putting it left. Try to find the, might have to find the smallest pulley. Oh, I'm going to get it off of this one. Hey, you can take it off that. That's fine. There you, there go. you go. All right. So, that being said, that is good to go. I'm going to leave the wrench on there. The belt is off. And now we can work our way back to the top. And like I said, can't even see the wrench now. I'm leaving it on there, but I'll be able to get my finger up there and pull it. It's not a very hard tensioner. Some tensioners, you really got to use like a half inch bar to do this one was very easy so first step battery second step tire third step shroud fourth step put a 16 millimeter on that tensioner turn it left and then you can get that belt off so next step is going to be working on the alternator so let's get to it all right guys back to what i think is step five so the next is gonna be starting to remove some of the electronics from the alternator, as well as figuring out the three bolts that hold it in. I've already looked at the new alternator. It's got an ear up here for one bolt, and then there's two down here. You can't see them, but you can access them. Uh, well, what we're gonna do is we popped off this plastic cover on this uh, terminal here, so we can get to that exposed stud. And then the clip for the alternator is behind it. So we're gonna get to that, get that done, and then uh, what is that? It's a uh, step for the stud or for the... Uh, the bolt up here. So the bolt up top, a half inch fits it. Maybe a 13 does too, but a half inch is good enough for us. Uh, so we're going to do that. And we're also going to break that stud loose. So that'll be your next step. Well, we'll get to it. All right, guys. So if you take a look, I got the nut off of that stud. And it was, I used a half millimeter uh, ratchet wrench to get in there. You probably can get a ratchet in there too. Broke the nut off. And now I just need to, you can hold the flashlight like right there. Now I'm just going to slide it off up there and then now you can kind of see our wire down there um so we're gonna have to pop that wire off or the clip i'm sorry and you know first part of that is pulling back the um pulling back that red clip just trying to see how much slack is in this wire and see if we can lift the alternator out first before we do it uh, i'm gonna try to fiddle with it Actually, I might be able to get it from the bottom of the car. Let me take a look. So that means it's recording. Yes, now it's recording. So okay. anyway, look, doing it from the bottom didn't seem like it was going to work. So I'm going to take a pick here and try to pop the uh, retainer clip off of the uh, like wire down here. See if I can. It doesn't seem like it wants to budge, of course. <sighs> Come on. If not, I might try to get the, oh, oh there we go. All right, so, I don't know, did, did you see anything of that? Not really. All right, yeah, it's tough to see. So, I got a little pick. Come on, camera. I know, she's having some issues today. All right, guys, so I took a pick, and you can see that little red part down there. I took a pick and pushed it uh, towards the driver's side of the car to get it out. That should allow me to pinch it and slide that off now. This is probably going to be the toughest part on the car. And it's still kind of hot because we started it. Here, you hold that and I'm going to get in there with my hand. There's a clip. I can feel it. This would help if the car wasn't hot. Yeah, I know. I keep hitting the exhaust too. Hear it clicking as I push it. Hear it? Yeah. <laughs> you see Nick and Sl you see Slani's car still up on Jack. There we go. So there's the clip. 
So you can see it now, you see this red piece, that's what I had to slide back. And then on the bottom, you can push this in and slide it out. So hopefully that, this clip here, see the red part that slides? Push that back, exposes this part here that you can push and it will come off. Not simple, not, not a piece of cake, but now we can get to our bolts. We already took the top one out. Kevin's gonna get the bottom ones and then I'll film him. Yeah, so guys, um, you know, I, I know where the bolts are at because I have the new alternator and we're looking at it installed like this because you know the top bolt's at. That means we have two bolts at the bottom. Those are the two that we're going for. So we're working on those two, we'll get it out. We've already shown you, we took off this stud here with that nut off the stud and that was where our clip was at. So that's the advantage of looking at the new part. Hopefully it matches the old one, but you know, we know where everything's at. Nothing goes through here. We're just working on putting everything in. So we're gonna finish pulling the old one out. Should pop right out and we'll get this one in. Excuse me. Choose how it goes. Everything's gotta be facing a certain way. Close. Usually the ears got to face a certain way and then you can get up out of there. Like I said, we can get the air intake out of there if you want. Yeah, it's so close though. Come out of this bitch. Oh boy, that went inside of there. Oh boy. <laughs> Let's not forget that's in there. Yeah, I think we're going to have to take the air intake out. It's so close to going through there though. I don't know, you seem like you almost got it. There you go, you got her. I think. Yeah. Alright, so show me back how that went there. So he got it out with the single bolt up top. Like that. Oh, I thought you had it like this. The double bolt's but, on the bottom. Yeah, going. that's the double bolt's right. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, I yeah. guess it doesn't matter, the same bolt pattern or like. whatever, but like this. That's how it's set in there. Either way, you got it out. So let's compare to the new one. All right, comparing to the new one. We got one piece is upside down. It's like that didn't look right. Okay, let's look at our brackets. Looks the same. Stud and plug in the same location. All the bolts look good. I mean, generally, if there's gonna be a difference, it's gonna be huge. You're not gonna, you're gonna have a bolt in a different direction or whatever. These look like mirror images of each other. I'm good with it. I can slap this old one in my core box to take back to AutoZone. And we'll get this one fitted in there. We'll start by getting all three bolts started uh, with that half inch uh, socket. I guess the 13 probably fit the two half inch was fine. You'll see that there's like a groove on this. This is gonna sit inside of there. Then once we get these started, we'll put our wires together on there, the clip first. And then we'll put our um, like wire loop on there. Then we'll put our belt back on and slap it all back together. But we'll show you. So next step, let's get this alternator inside the car. You got the old one out, you get the new one in, right? Uh, it'd probably go it's in. probably easier to go yeah. in, yeah, because the weight's on your side. Look at that, dropped it right it in. It went right in, I knew it was gonna go right in. Yeah. So I'd say start with the top bolt right. to get it started. And this is just my guess of that, you know, you can see that one, get that one started. You know, not tight, just you know, start it all by oh, hand. Sure. And I guess all bolts were the same size? Yep, they're all the same. Okay. So I uh, something to remember, everybody. All bolts were the same size. You can't really mess that up. He's going to start with the top bolt just to get it lined up enough for him. Then we'll start on the bottom bolts. Now, when we were getting the bottom bolts out, I'll be very honest with you. We were using this tool that he's got that gets into tight cavities. It comes from Harbor Freight. It's a Harbor Freight special. We also used a swivel. Because what we were finding is as we were backing the bolts out, uh, we were hitting with the ratchet the actual uh, AC refrigerant line. So then you were getting stuck. So we had to tighten it back in, get it off. Uh, if we did this again, what I'd suggest doing is starting with the bottom two bolts, breaking them loose. Don't touch the top bolt yet. Just start with the bottom two bolts, get them loose. Then you can take them out with your fingers. At least we could. And then taking the top bolt off and being able to hold the weight of the alternator. I wouldn't even go any tighter, really. No. Yeah, I would just, you know, I mean, you can, but you want to have as much play as you, as you can. Um, that way, the weight of the alternator, if you take the top bolt out last, the weight of the alternator doesn't mess up your ability to get the bottom bolts out. So we, we ended up having to like backtrack in a way, um, which was, you know, annoying. Um, and I was like, Kevin, just make sure we're not pinching the wires. Where's the wires at for this thing? Are they out of the way? Yeah, they're right here. Yeah, just make sure you're not like pinching the wires in there Underneath or something. Underneath of it or something. Yeah, maybe. which you could do. I mean, so just be aware where the wires are at. You don't got to put them on before it's 
buttoned up, just you know, you'll you'll be really mad at yourself if you had the wires are behind it and pinched, you take it and you gotta again. take out every single bolt again. So just be sure to check that. So that one started. This is probably gonna be the hardest one. Just can't see it. Yeah, you should be able to feel it though, and you don't gotta. And you got you got that other tool now. So that tool's. I love that tool. Yeah, we've used it before in all kinds of stuff. It's always a lifesaver. It's really good for. Um, what is it? What do we use it for all the time? Use it for uh, your distributor. Distributor, yep. That's yeah, so is. we were trying to get back to the hold down clamp on the distributor, and it works great to get in a tight area because, you know, the distributor is literally right up on it. You should be able to get it through there. We got it out. Oh, there we go. It's going to be a little finessing. There she is. So, I guess camera angle is, is what it is. I mean, it's tight space. But I'd say if we weren't filming, this is probably about a one-hour job. I'm looking at the tension now and thinking maybe we could have take, taken the airbox off to get to it. Um, but, you know, whatever way gets the tension easier for you, great. If you found a better way, leave it in the comment section. It took me less than five minutes for me because I had the lift to take the wheel off, to take this plastic off and get in there. It's very quick. So to me, that's fine. I don't mind that. But if it's better for you to take the airbox off and you can get to it, uh, great. I, I think it's a tight... I think it's a tight squeeze, but I, it probably could be done looking at it now. You just get the air box out of the way. Now that I see exactly where it's at. Did you get both of them started? Yep. So he's got both of them started by hand, right? Yep. And if you're doing this and you start to feel a lot of tension and the bolt's not flat yet, or like bottomed out, I'm sorry, if it's not seated all the way, then you're probably doing something wrong. This is, is going to be probably a aluminum, aluminum block don't want to go overboard on this and i'll also say you're not gonna be able to get a torque wrench down there on the bottom so you need to kind of get a good feel for it know it's tight um you know you don't want to strip the bolts you don't want to over torque it but you need to know that it's in there strong uh, i have worked on cars where people didn't put the alternator bolts tight enough they work their way loose end up uh snapping like an ear or something off of the actual timing cover or something like that where like it takes a complete overhaul to fix so hopefully that doesn't happen feel like it's going in yeah, it's going to. I just got to get right. the right so, thing on So, I'll, uh, I'll skip this. We'll get these all buttoned up, and we'll check back in. All right, guys. Back again to recap. So, Kevin went ahead and got all these bolts uh, in. Started by hand. Got them nice and tight. Uh, again, we used, like, a special adapter uh, ratchet. I'll show it to you again. I don't know what they call this, but it essentially has a swivel here, a swivel here. And you can really... Um, get in there easier because we were really struggling like i said while we were loosening it we were hitting this uh ac refrigerant line it was causing us to bind up so using that we got in there a lot better even tightening it up so that's all good the new alternator's in i already put our clip on there our wire harness clip let's see if i can get the light a little better in there so behind here is our wire harness clip i pushed it in and then i pushed the red tab down make sure you push that tab down or you could have it come out you should also hear it click on there I have since got our uh, wire loop on here and I started the stud. I'm going to go back and tighten that up to make sure it's secure. Uh, there's a little tooth that sticks down. You want to make sure that tooth is in the right spot. Uh, that way this thing sits flat. This terminal should sit flat on that nut that sticks out. If it's like sideways or it's like sticking out, then you must have to move it left and right to get it set. So we're going to tighten that up and then we're going to work on our belt and put our splash guard on and we'll be, we'll be done. So we'll keep going. We'll button this up. We'll show you the belt and then uh, hopefully have a good to go car. Hey guys, I didn't film us getting the belt back on, but what we did is we put the belt on every single pulley except, I believe that's the, oh, what is that, power steering pump or water pump? I'm not 100% sure what that is. I didn't get a good look. But I put, you know, relieved tension on the tensioner and then had my buddy loop it over this pump here that, that, that made it the easiest to get on. It's on, we're gonna check it from the top. We're gonna put our splash guard back on here. Take a step back. Again, maybe you could have got it from the water pump, but it'd be hard to see all these hoses. So I suggest taking this off. We're gonna put it back in with our four or five bolts, all of our clips. It's literally just gonna pop back over. Easy as anything, and we'll get that back in. So we're gonna pop that back in, make sure we're good to go. We'll check up top, and then we should be uh, done this job.
right, guys, this is one of the final recasts. We've got our tire back on. I'm going to torque this down when it's on the ground. we got our plastic uh, wheel well um, shroud, whatever we're going to call it, back in. We've already got the belt back on. So really, realistically, the only thing we have to do is put the battery back in, which I've been charging. Torque this down and test it. Um, we're probably going to unhook the battery to see if it dies afterwards and make sure the alternator is good. Because <laughs> I really hope it isn't like a ground issue like the other dart I worked on. But otherwise, um, we're going to get on the ground. I'll show a little recap, make sure it starts up all right and can run without the battery. And hopefully we'll be good to go. All right, guys, final update for us. Uh, we got the car running. We actually put the battery in, started the car. And I know this is probably not best practice, but we unhooked the battery to see if the car would die. It did not. Previously, when we tested and unhooked the battery, the car died right away. So we know now that the alternator is able to power the car and it should be charging it okay. So since then, oh, you know what popped the hood? You know what I didn't do? I forgot to tighten the strap down to hold the battery down. You know, the, the hold down? So I gotta tighten the hold down too, which I almost forgot. So good thing I wanted to recap. But anyway, we're good to go. That was our job. Uh, so you're gonna need uh, probably a pick to get that wire off that I use. You're gonna need a half inch, um, a ratchet, probably a extension, um, as well as a ratchet wrench that I use to get the stud off. And then again, you may be able to use something else to get to the tensioner. I think it's best to take the wheel off like I had done. Uh, otherwise, it's a 16 millimeter that you're going to use for the tensioner bolt itself, and you will turn that to the left to release tension. So I hope this helped you guys. I know it wasn't super informative. It's so much harder to film out here when we're hot and we're just trying to get it done. I need to get this car back to my sister-in-law so she can go to uh, college today. Uh, I just need to get it done quickly. I tried to get it done yesterday, but AutoZone unfortunately didn't get the parked to me like they said they would. Uh, they're great there, but uh, you can't rely on the hub, even though the people, you know, call the hub and make sure that it's gonna be there, it wasn't there. But anyway, all is good. Hope this helps you out and uh, have a great day, guys. Be sure to like, subscribe and follow uh, if this helped you. If you have to do a starter on a dart, I have a video for that too, but I think it's for a different motor. And it's 2013 so have a good day hey guys welcome to part two and this is going to be the the alternator did not fix our issue 100 percent so uh here's the new alternator you saw me just put that in and essentially it was good for a few days and then um my sister-in-law gave me a call on the, on a friday morning yesterday morning and was pretty much like hey um car died at the you know while trying to leave the neighborhood it started off fine, it drove down, and then she said when she went to hit the brakes before leaving the neighborhood, and the car just shut off. Everything else was on, the radio, the air conditioning, well, I mean, the air conditioning isn't technically running, but the blower motor's running, but the car died. So here I am scratching my head, wondering what's wrong. Did we get a bad alternator or not? And when, uh, originally I thought, okay, maybe a bad alternator. Let me tell you the full story. I get there, we push the car, because when I try to turn it over, it doesn't start, it's just, it's just clicking. And I thought, okay, battery's dead. I didn't take my voltmeter to check, so I just assumed, okay, battery's dead. So uh, we end up pushing the car, you know, I don't know, 300 feet to, you know, it's all paved to the back to her driveway. Um, and then I just randomly try to turn the car over and it starts. And it starts strong, it doesn't hesitate. It's not like it doesn't have a good charge. So that told me, okay, so the battery's good. If the alternator had failed, the battery would have kept running until death. It would have rode itself until there was no voltage left so to me, now that has ruled out just being an alternator issue. So then I have to think, okay, um, car dying while driving, not wanting to start randomly. What, what does this remind me of? And now I'm thinking of Matt's dart, the no crank, no start condition. So um, after I got it back to my house where we drove it, because it drove fine again, um, we, I have not been able to replicate its issue anymore. However, to try to alleviate pains, I am doing a ground upgrade and I'm going to show you this ground upgrade now so that you can check it out. All right, so I started by going to AutoZone and looking up their pretty much, you know, switch to starter battery cables. They're good ground cables, heavy gauge. Doesn't mean you have to put it on a starter. And that is part number DW449B. It's for four gauge. And then I think the 49 is its actual length. Uh, you may be able to go longer or shorter, but this worked perfect. And let me show you how I did it. So. I started at the alternator that I replaced. I knew it had a good solid bolt. I pulled that bolt all the way out. It is a 13 millimeter. I then put this, uh, this eyelet uh, ring terminal or whatever on there and zipped it in. I ran this wire up. I zip tied it here just for peace of mind. And then I actually ran it all the way through this area. Now I did it here because I didn't want to really put it on top of the exhaust. I probably could have just looped it here, but there's a lot of heat there. So I ran it through. 
I zip tied it again here, um, and then I ran it all the way to my battery terminal. I actually took off this nut, it's 10 millimeter, and took off this, plat this metal piece, put this ring terminal under it, and then put the metal piece back on. That way it has a nice solid ground. If you have a nut that will fit this other stud, just put it over there. I couldn't find one. I went through my <laughs> all my universal kits, didn't have one, so I may change it later. But that will be adding a ground that will make sure the motor has a direct link to ground, no more going through this flimsy, crappy ground that the Dart came with. All right, so that is the, the upgrade. So besides the upgrade, if you're still having electrical gremlins and you don't want to do the 10 to $15 upgrade here, you can clean your grounds. I already have a video for that. It essentially, it's called, I think, Dodge Dart, no crank, no start. But it ends up, you need to put the car in the air. You need to take the belly pan out. I think it has several 8 millimeter bolts. That will give you access to the driver's side splash guard. And you'll go from the bottom, and there is a wire coming from the battery to a stud. And then it goes from that stud to the transmission. It's either a 12 or a 13 and a 10 and a 12, something around there. You know, one of those common sizes. But you want to take those off, wire brush them, uh, wire brush the surface, and put them back on. That is the cheap way to do it. But I honestly am very happy with this ground upgrade. I'm probably going to talk to Matt and see if he wants to do it too in case he has any weird issues. But I feel confident this is safe and good to use. I'm going to put my engine cover back on and we'll keep an eye on it. And even if somehow this rubbed through somewhere, it is a ground wire. It's no different than something touching, um, than touching, you know, bare metal on the car. Granted, you don't want to send 12 volts to it, but if you have a loose 12 volts somewhere, it's going to find a way to ground regardless. So anyway, that's your tip. Hopefully that helps. And uh, if it did somehow save you from your electronic nightmare of a dart, you know, be sure to subscribe and like, and like the video. It's really helpful to me. And, uh, Again, my Dodge Dart No Crank No Start is probably my most watched video, and it's only like six minutes, and it gets to the point. So this one's a little longer because you know how to do your alternator. But if it's just electrical issues, try this first. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.